folks and welcome back to the garage. In this video we're going to discuss fuel injector pulse width. So pulse width is a fancy way of saying the on time in a digital signal. Remember back to previous lessons, you know that digital signals mean on and off. By nature, fuel injectors are turned on and off. They can't really be uh, partially opened or partially closed like a faucet. They're either spraying fuel or they're not. So these little fuel injectors here, got a couple of different kinds, have a solenoid winding inside. When power is sent to this, when current flows through that winding, a magnetic field is created and it will lift the little pintle inside and let fuel flow in the top and spray out the bottom. The way that the computer has control over how much fuel the engine gets is by altering this pulse width or altering the on time of the fuel injector. So a short on pulse is going to deliver obviously less fuel than a longer pulse. So first we're going to just go over it real quickly here and then we're going to take a walk outside and I'll show you how you actually measure this on a car. But before you actually look at it being measured, you should know what it's going to look like when we, uh, when we pull it up on an oscilloscope, what the actual waveform shape looks like and what the different pieces of it mean. And to understand the waveform, we have to understand how the injector circuit works. So, basically, we have 12 volts. It'll pass through a fuse, pass through our ignition switch, to the coil of our fuel injector. That's the symbol for the coil. The other side of our fuel injector is going to connect to our PCM. Inside our PCM, there's going to be a transistor known as a driver. And that driver basically acts like a solid state switch. I'm going to draw it as a switch just for easy, easy uh, understanding. It's not actually a switch. Moving parts in the PCM would wear out. So obviously, it's a solid state device. There's nothing in there moving. So when you start the car, you turn the key on, current can flow through the fuel injector to ground only if the PCM supplies the ground. This is known as a ground side switch. We have 12 volts available to this all the time when the ignition is on. And ground whenever the PCM wants this injector to open and flow fuel. So if we were to take a multimeter and connect here, we would see battery voltage. If we were to measure here, we, with the engine running, we would actually see a slightly lower than uh, battery voltage reading because what would actually be happening is this ground would be rapidly turning on and off and on and off. And the multimeter, just a plain digital multimeter, isn't fast enough to respond to that changing voltage. So it's going to show kind of like an average. So the correct tool to use for this is an oscilloscope or a graphing meter. If we were to take our oscilloscope and hook it up, we would connect the negative lead of our oscilloscope to ground, and we would connect the positive lead of our oscilloscope to the ground side of the injector. And what that's going to do is it's going to show us 12 volts when the injector is off because there is no ground. And as we learned with uh, basic electricity, there'll be voltage available up to and open. It's going to show us zero volts. the injector is on or grounded. So ideally what we would expect this waveform to look like is a square wave coming across our screen. And basically every time that wave would be high that would be off. And every time that wave is low that indicates the wire is grounded and that would be on. So the width of this section of the wave is known as the pulse width, and that's going to be measured in some form of time. In the case of an injector, it's measured in milliseconds or thousandths of a second. So the reality of an injector waveform is it's going to look a little bit different. When the injector is off, the wave is high. When the injector is turned on, the wave is pulled down to ground. 
So the duration of the injector being on or open or spraying fuel, the wave is going to be low. And when the injector turns off, we actually get a spike. And that spike right here is a result of the magnetic field inside this injector winding collapsing. So it's the same, same thing that we learned about during ignition systems. It's caused by uh, uh, self-induction where the magnetic field around a coil collapses upon itself and induces voltage back in itself. Because magnetic fields in coils tend to collapse faster than they build, they produce a higher than normal voltage when they collapse, and that's that little voltage spike. So when we go and look at the waveform in just a minute, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a line, a very square 90 degree drop, another nice 90 degree corner, another nice 90 degree corner, then a high voltage spike there, which will then kind of drop back down and end up back at the 12 volts again. So this will be 12 volts, this will be zero, that'll spike upwards maybe 40 or 50 volts, and then we'll be back down to 12. And then on the graphing meter that we're going to use, or the oscilloscope, I'm going to show you how you can actually measure the amount of time right there in milliseconds. So this right here is the on time, or the pulse width. Okay, so let's take a walk outside. Free my camera from the ladder that I use as a uh, tripod. Here's my Fairlane. Hello, Fairlane. Fairlane has a carburetor, so we won't be measuring anything on that. Instead, we're going to use the Ford Tortoise. So, the reason we're using the Ford Tortoise is the injectors are nice and easy to get at right here. So, we look at the top of the engine, 3 liter V6. We have our intake manifold, our upper intake plenum. Got the lower intake manifold down there. This stainless steel piece right here is the fuel rail. Fuel comes in on uh, this side. So, our high pressure fuel line comes in here. It goes to the back fuel rail and gets the three injectors that are hiding under the intake. This little crossover tube down here in, in gray, that brings the fuel over to this rail for the front three injectors. And then this little guy right here is a fuel rail pressure sensor. So that's given some feedback to the PCM about what the fuel pressure is. So when we look at these, we notice this one's got a red wire and a brown with a blue stripe. This one's got a red wire and what looks like a tan wire. And then this one's got a red wire and a green with a red stripe. So what that's telling us, they all share the same power wire, but they have different grounds so that they can be controlled individually. So this green wire is the one that we want to we want to probe. So we're going to probe that with our trusty little T-pin here. And you never want to stab a wire. You don't want to put this through the insulation because that would make an opening that moisture could get into and cause corrosion. We're going to sneak it in next to this little rubber seal. Just like so. This is known as back probing. Wiggle that in. Went in there. Okay. So, here's my graphing meter. It's not a true oscilloscope. This is uh, some uh, last century technology here. This is my old Snap on Vantage meter. Uh, it still works. Still uh, a nice, reliable little tool. Maybe not as fancy and accurate as the new scopes, but it'll do the job. So, we're going to go into our waveform viewer. We're going to be looking at an injector, which is a solenoid, and it's ground controlled, so I don't even have to scroll up and down to change anything. So, the database in this, in this tool already knows what the voltage it should set this graph to, it knows what the time, uh, time trace it should set this to, so 10 milliseconds right here. The jacks we're going to be using up here are going to be channel 1 and common, so I'm going to try to Grab my meter leads that I have hanging up here on the hood. Okay, black's going to go into common. And the other end is going to go over here to battery ground, the only known good ground. Okay, my red lead is going to get plugged in here. 
and the other end is going to get clipped to this T-pin. Now we have to make sure that this can't fall off or short to things. If this shorted to ground, it would basically hold the injector open non-stop and would be flooding that cylinder. And if it shorted to power, that power would be trying to use the uh, driver and the PCM as a path to ground, and we would probably burn the driver and the PCM, and that would be an expensive mistake. So you got to be cautious with that. This seems pretty secure. I'll leave my meter propped right there, and we're going to start the car up. Okay, so here we are. We're running. Now let's go look at our meter. And that is a beautiful injector waveform. That's exactly what it should look like. So, this portion along the bottom is the on time. The spike is when it turns off, and it's off until the next time that injector fires, which we can't see happen within a 10 millisecond sweep. So, if I use my little scroll wheel here to navigate down over to that sweep, if I put more time on the screen, It makes the wave appear smaller, so that's not good for looking at detail, but if I want to see the next occurrence, the next time that injector is firing, I can keep adding time. There it is. So, just another thing. This is live. These are changing ever so slightly every time. This is not one firing of the injector. It's the first one that the tool is capturing. That little plus symbol right there is known as a trigger. And that trigger is set to basically show the waveform or display the wave on the screen, starting right here on the screen every time it passes through that voltage level. Now, if I reach up to the throttle body, this is an old car and has uh, drive-by cable. If I rev the engine up a little bit, as I increase the RPM, you're going to notice those waves become closer together. Because at a higher RPM, the injector needs to fire more often. So, the reason they're becoming closer together is they're firing more frequently. Basically, the frequency is increasing. Now, if I hit the throttle kind of aggressively, you notice not only did they get closer together, but the pulse width got wider, the on time got wider. And the reason for that is under sudden acceleration we need more fuel. I'm actually going to reposition this scope up to the windshield so that I can sit in the driver's seat and put it in gear and put a load on the engine so we can really make that pulse lift go up with load. And uh, as far as sensing load on this engine, this is a mass airflow equipped car. It's got a mass airflow sensor right here after the air cleaner. So that's its main, uh, main input for load sensing. Alright, so bear with me as I get this meter propped up here on the windshield where you're going to be able to see it oh, and I want to change the time signature here before we do this so or I'm more interested in the detail here of the pulse width we're going to increase that or actually in this case decrease that I was up at 200 milliseconds now I'm down at 40 That's up by the windshield. I'm going to reach put this thing in gear. Alright, now I'm going to two-foot it. I'm going to step on the accelerator a little bit with my foot on the brake. Being that it's front-wheel drive and it's a 183 horsepower Ford Taurus, it's not going to do a burnout. But the added load should increase that pulse width, so here we go. And it did. You might notice on sudden decel when I let my foot off the throttle, that waveform actually it kind of closes up. It has less pulse width real quick there. So I'm gonna put this back in park. I'm gonna come back out here. I'm 
set this right up right here. So, first thing I want to do is I want to change the time signature here. I want to bring this back down to the 10 milliseconds. Okay, so this whole screen is worth 10 milliseconds. So just kind of a rough estimate, it looks like one, two, three and a half-ish. But with this tool, we can actually freeze it and measure that. And I haven't done this in a very long time, so I actually have to remember how to do that. So we're going to scroll up here to hold. There we go. It's telling me why to toggle my cursors. So if I move my little scroll wheel, this dotted line over here is a cursor. I'm going to place that right there where the injector turned on. I'm now going to press Y, which is going to put me in charge of this cursor. See me wiggling it back and forth there. I'm going to scroll that over here. Right there. I'm going to hit no for a moment so that I can go back into scrolling. Right there, delta T or the difference in time 3.9 milliseconds. So that measurement right there is 3.9 milliseconds, which is pretty typical for. Uh, an injector at idle. When an engine's idling, it doesn't need a whole lot of fuel. Three to four milliseconds is pretty common. I've seen them even lower. I've seen them down around 2.5 milliseconds. Uh, you don't generally see it much higher than four. That's that's pretty much your upper limit. All right, if I toggle back out of here. Remember how to get back to the voltage reading. There we go. Turn it off a of delta T, and now we see the voltages. So this cursor, where it grounded the wave, we can see it's at zero volts, and we know that zero volts is on. And the voltage spike that I talked about inside this little, this little upshoot here. It's 52 volts, so that injector is making a very momentary 52 volt spike every time it turns off. And that's why the, the wave goes above the normal height and then comes back down to its normal 12. If I click off of that and go back to cursor control, and I scroll that cursor over here, we can see that that's our 14 volt um, system voltage that that injector is running on. Again, this car is running, so charging voltage 14 volts in this case. So... That is how you measure an injector waveform. You set up your scope, you follow the instructions on the screen, you back probe your injector. By the way, that 52 volt spike, you can actually feel that sometimes. In this case, I'm not feeling it, but you can actually get a little tingle off of that. So, positive meter lead goes to the negative side of the injector, negative goes to a known good ground, and you start the car up, and there you have it. That is how you measure injector pulse width and how you view a waveform on a scope. So, hopefully you can see me in this shot because I can't see the other side of the phone, but uh, that's it. That's how you do injector pulse width, and uh, this concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you hope you learned something from it.